What's up guys? This is Jerry right here. I'm making a video for these devotionals because I cannot type all this stuff out on my phone. And um, I just feel like I'll be able to convey the message more if I talk it out than type it out. So I wanted to talk, I'm going to try to keep this, minute, this video under 10 minutes, but I wanted to talk about uh, the power of fasting. Uh, the, pr the power of fasting, prayer and fasting, but more specifically, I want to hone in on fasting. As you guys know, we're fasting on Mondays um, from 7 to 12, uh, no food, just water. 7 to 12, five hours on Mondays. Um, but just pray um, and just ask God, you know, if you feel like you can do more, if you can go along just pray and seek God about that. And after I share this message with you, hopefully you'll see why. I've been on this journey of fasting and I've seen amazing results in the spirit in my life, greater discipline, certain areas of bondage that I was in that when I began to fast, they began to break. I'm telling you, let, let me get into this so you understand. Okay, fasting. So what is fasting? Um, I have got some seminary material here on systematic theology. And fasting is the discipline of abstaining for a time from all foods. Okay, all foods. So fasting is dealing with food, with there being no foods. Now, sometimes when people fast, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to give up sugars. I'm going to give up social media. That's not fasting. Fasting is giving up all foods. When Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, he was fasting. He had no food except for water. That's the biblical fast. Now, all of those other things, there are great tools for consecration. Most times when you're giving up things, especially like for Lenny things, it's probably things that you will not probably need no way. You know, you say you're going to give up social media. You know, I spend too much time on social media. That's something probably that you need to fix. <laughs> you know, it can be a consecration, but it's probably something that needs to be turned into a lifestyle. But fasting is no foods um, for a certain period of time. In the Bible, it accompanies prayer. It accompanies prayer for the purpose of intense intercession repentance, worship, or seeking of God. So this is a biblical thing. Um, and this, I didn't know, just doing research about it, that this is supposed to be the normal practice of the believer uh, in biblical times. Um, in, with the Israel, Israelites, Jewish culture, they fast twice a week from sun up to sundown, which is normally from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. twice a week. It's powerful, though, I'm telling you. And it's not as hard as you think it is. But that's my first encouragement to you. I know we're fasting. You know, we're getting ready for the concert. Um, this fast, season of fasting that we're in, is not just for the concert, but it's for you. In your personal life, I'm pretty sure you got challenges and things in your life that don't seem to budge. You know, we've been talking about confessions. We've been talking about warfare. Fasting is another weapon that you can use in your life to see the hand of God move, to see miracles, to have your faith restored, to have your belief restored. Um, so yeah, this is supposed to be a normal practice. People do it in the Eastern culture, but in Western church culture, it's a lost art. Be encouraged to get back on it. Um, it's a discipline that makes you better. Your mental capacity. Some of us have health challenges that can be healed probably through fasting, if we're just being honest. Um, your clarity of thought, your zeal, the things you see, the, the your ear to the spirit realm. It really uh, hones in on your sensitivity. So there's a lot of benefits from it. Um, and I was just even thinking, um, the first temptation in the Bible. We love we love food. We look, I love, I got my son kiss right here, and I'm gonna drink it before we go on this fast tomorrow. We love food. Oh, I love food. Oh, I love to eat. But if you think about it, the first temptation in the Bible was dealing with what? Food. And it's not to say that food is bad, but it's just human nature. We want something to satisfy us so bad. And, you know, it's not, food is not bad. But going without food does teach you discipline. I found a description that blew my mind. Philippians 3. 19 says the end of the destruction is the God of their bellies. So, and not just pertaining to food, but some of us have certain struggles and strongholds where it has to be fed. 
consistently. We're always putting something. Paul said, you know, when I would do good, evil is always present. That's what sin does. It ha has to be fed to you. So if you're dealing with some type of struggle or stronghold or some type of spiritual battle, you're warned against something, you just feel like you're just feeding yourself darkness, dark thoughts, depression, whatever it is. You're feeding your belly, which leads to destruction. Fasting is a way, watch this, that will discipline your body that would discipline your belly, your spiritual belly, so that you can now feed it and substitute it with the word of God. So the purpose of fasting is, is mainly, okay, yes, to give up food, but that time that you would spend eating, you're spending time in the word and you're feeding yourself spiritual food, which is scripture. But it teaches you how to control your belly. I will tell you now, and I'm, I'm not telling, I'm not saying this to brag, but just where I am now. Um, because I don't want to just give you information that I haven't walked out yet. Like, it has transformed my life. And now, I used to think, oh, when can I fast? But now my mindset is, when can I eat? Because I fa you can actually, I, fa I fast a lot because there are some struggles and strongholds in my life that had that Mark 9 anointing. These kind only come out by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting sets your belief up. Those disciples couldn't cast out the demon in that girl in uh, Mark chapter 9. And Jesus said, you faithless generation, these kind only come out by prayer and fasting. He wasn't so much talking about the demonic spirit. They couldn't drive out the demonic spirit because they didn't believe. Fasting will strengthen your belief in God. It will give you, put you in the position to where you can hear from God and get your faith restored. That was these kind. These kind, the, 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 that unbelief. And we don't think unbelief is a bad thing. Unbelief is demonic. Sometimes we think of unbelief, we think of doubt. Oh, God, I believe you can do it. But you know, I don't know. No, 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 no. Unbelief is saying, I have the assurance that the opposite is going to happen. So when those disciples were trying to cast out the demon, and but they saw the, the little boy possessed, they believe the exact opposite. There is no way this demon is going to leave this boy. That's unbelief. But Jesus said, if you fast and pray, it'll strengthen your belief. Think about that. So, you know, if, if your faith needs to be restored, real talk, if your faith needs to be restored, seek God, start fasting. Give up food. Get, give it up and say, God, I'm going to start small. We've started small only five hours. You know, a little hunger pain. You feel it for a while, after a while, it'll go away. But it'll strengthen your belief. I'm rushing through this, uh, but I got some notes. Yeah, okay. So I got my systematic theology book here. It There's a section dealing with fasting, and I just want to read you um, a couple of points that it points out. Um, one thing is fasting increases our sense of humility and dependence on God. For our hunger and physical weakness continually to remind us how we are really not strong in ourselves, but we need the Lord. It's a spiritual thing, and it will teach you to depend on God. And it's really not a belly thing. Once you're in the midst of fasting, it's a mind thing. There, I, <laughs> there's been times where I fasted, and it's like, I wouldn't be hungry, but something in my mind just told me I had to eat. And it's those kind of things that uh, are spiritual, and they're mental battles that, that can be won and practiced out in winning through fasting, and that same discipline that you learned in fasting, you can now apply it to the strongholds in your life, the addictions in your life, and, and God will give you the grace to break those habits. Fasting allows us to give more attention to prayer spending and spending time on eating, for we are not spending time on eating. Like I said, it's to replace your meal times. You know, if you took 30 minutes on your lunch break, the season of fasting, spend that time in the Word. Okay, it's a replacement. It is a continual reminder that just as we sacrifice some personal comfort for the Lord, not by eating, we must also continually sacrifice all of ourselves for Him. So yeah, it's, it's sacrificial. It's very sacrificial. It's you telling yourself, I'm going to go without. God, use this sacrifice for your glory. Let's keep going on. Fasting is a good exercise for self-discipline. For as we refrain from eating food, which we would ordinarily desire, it strengthens our ability to refrain from sin. 
to which we might otherwise be tempted or yielded to. I'm telling you, if you have issues saying no to sin, guilty. Start fasting. Start fasting. If we train ourselves to accept the small suffering of fasting, come on, somebody. Because fasting is nothing compared to some of the things that we're addicted to. If we just be on the angle, call it out on this camera, but we know. We, I ain't going to get in your business because I don't want you in my business. But if you can conquer your belly, you can conquer anything. Uh, if you can conquer what goes, if you can conquer a fork, huh, that, those giants in your life can be conquered. I believe God. I believe it. Fasting also heightens our spiritual and mental alertness and a sense of God's presence as we focus less on material things of the world, such as food, and the energies of our body are free from digesting and processing foods. There is so much science behind fasting. There's so many scientific facts that uh, cross, cross over into the spiritual realm. I don't have time to go into it today, but it is so fascinating. Um, but yeah, you now are more aware of what's going on in the spirit realm because your body isn't working so hard to process food. I mean, I'm not trying to be nasty or nothing, but um, it has helped my digestive system. I'll just say that. It's not, <laughs> yeah, TMI. It has helped my digestive system. All right. Lastly, fasting expresses earnestness and urgency in our prayers. If we are continuing to fast, eventually we would die. Therefore, in a symbolic way, fasting says to God that we are prepared to lay down our lives, that the situation be changed. Rather than the, rather than that, it continue. Um, and so I just want to end it. Um, yeah, prayer sacrificial is you laying down your life. Um, when you have time, I want you to study the scripture. Read the whole book of Joel. Joel, it's in the Old Testament. J O E L. The whole book of Joel. Um, just paraphrasing. It's about a time of calamity and sword, where um, the Israelites, you know, they were crying out to God. Joel was interceding on their behalf because there was such great calamity and famine in the land. And um, he heard from God and called a corporate fast. He called a solemn assembly for the people of God to return back to God, which is repentance. And I just want to end with this thought that fasting is a catalyst to repentance. Fasting is a catalyst to repentance. If you find yourself in a state where you need restoration, and you need to be reconnected back to God, but you don't know, you've tried praying and all of these things, I would say, try fasting as well. Turn your plate down. And you will see in the book of Job how they were able to turn back to God and God had pity on them and God restored their land. So read the book of Job, especially chapter two, and um, you will see the power of fasting. Um, I'll try to make some more content about this, but I just had to get it off my chest because um, I've been seeing the benefits of it. And if I see something that's good, that's working for me, I want to share it with you guys. So fast. Of course, we're fasting once a week, but pray. And if God shows you another day of the week or if he wants you to do it longer, push yourself. Push yourself. I'm telling you, things will shift in your life. Things will shift. So I'm done. I'm at 14 minutes. Love y'all.